Hi, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I have an art journal video for you today, so get comfy and let's get crafty. I will be working from the mid-month mini mission, Mission Inspiration, February 2022 prompt. The randomly selected letter was E, and some of the inspiration words that Mike has added are Electric Emerald Eastern, sorry, Eastern Eclipse and Erase. And of course, because I saw E, I had to go with elephant. That comes into play later. I will begin by taking a piece, my regular piece of mixed media paper and my gel medium, and I will be attaching or adhering this piece of pattern paper. It is a um, ledger page. It's probably from like a big, huge scrap paper stack from Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Joann's or something like that. I am going to stick this down with some gel medium and then trim it off. The paper I am working on is my traditional or my normal five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of paper. It is a mixed media paper. It is from a spiral bound notebook that I cut apart because I was tired of the spirals getting gunky. Yeah. And then the pages get thick and the cover doesn't close real well. So I ended up purchasing a package of a size five three ring binders to use as my art journals. And I got them on Amazon. I will try to find them again and link it down below. So now that I have the pattern paper adhered, I do want to go over the top of it with my gel medium to create that um, non-porous surface for the shading I will add later. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom through the heat setting and the trimming down with my gigantic tin holt scissors that I love so much and move on to my next step, which is um, edging. I'm going to take this archival ink, it is watering can, and a sponge, and go ahead and ink up the edges. This creates kind of a, a shading around the edge that make, makes your brain, anytime you add a frame or um, an edging to artwork or a photograph or anything like that, it pulls the, your brain and your eyes into the center of the page. It tells, you, it tells your brain what to look at. Just a little trick I've picked up over the years. And actually for real, I heard it from somebody else and then researched it. I was like, hey, wait, that's true. Cool. Okay. <laughs> my next step is going to be adding texture paste. I have my Liquitex. Let's see. It is Liquitex modeling paste. It is thicker than the Crafters Workshop light and fluffy, but not as thick as the heavy texture paste from Liquitex. So, yeah. I have, here's my first nod to the E. It is an Eastern themed background. This is a quatrefoil, which is very often prominent in Middle Eastern and Moroccan prints. So there's my first E is Eastern. I am adding some texture paste through the entire stencil. I decided to go ahead and cover up the whole page. Um, when I pulled the stencil out, I wasn't sure how much of the page I was going to cover, but I decided to go all in. The issue with that is my stencil is more narrow than my page. So I did have to let it dry or force it to dry <laughs> with my heat gun, which is kind of a mixed bag because some texture paste will crack and, um, and, and bubble with the heat gun. So I tried to keep the, the heat gun as far away from the page as I could and still have it be effective. I did figure out how to line up my stencil here um, my texture paste was not as dry as I had hoped. It did kind of leave a little bit of um, dent or scratch marks from the edge of the stencil into the other texture paste, but it was nothing I was overly concerned with and that even shows up at the, in the end. So now that I have this um, pattern all the way on to my art journal page, I will clean up and dry that up and move on to the next step. Um, so here is my elephant. This is an image I purchased from an Etsy store. It is actually a, phot a photograph that you purchase as a, a download to have printed for wall art. And I will link that Etsy store down below as well. I've, I found they had some really fantastic prints and I am all about the elephants. I have always loved elephants. I think elephants are my first spirit animal because I tend to just kind of push my way into things and and um yeah i'm just kind of there in the room hi i'm here yeah which is kind of funny because i'm also mostly a rather introverted human being 
So I don't know. When I have to be visible, I want to be the biggest thing in the room, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It probably comes from being the oldest child. Anyway, this is not psychology. It's chart journaling. <laughs> I am using that archival ink to go around the edge of my elephant. He is printed on copy paper and I want to kind of hide that white core. I also want to add a little bit of shading to the edge of the elephant because he's also gray. And I am saying he because he's got tusks, but I think that female elephants have tusks too. So it, <laughs> I don't know. Do animals really care? I, I think sometimes we get way too hung up on that. Anyway, diatribe for another day. I, <clears throat> sorry, it is very wet where we are today. So my allergies are out of control. I've taken two allergy pills today already. Um, my texture paste is nearly dry. And this is the location I will be putting my elephant. I also have another um, little part to go along with it that I'm keeping a secret because I thought it was kind of clever and funny. But the first thing I want to do was add some emerald. I have my Magello Mission Gold watercolors here. And there's a beautiful green color. I think it's called Verdan, but it's a beautiful emerald green. And my plan is to just add a little bit across the top of my page. And then with my spray bottle, encourage that color to trickle down around the texture paste and kind of fill up the background and leave the texture paste mostly untouched. Um, that didn't work as well as it in real life as it did in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> I don't use watercolors enough, I guess, to predict how they're really going to act because in reality, they just went right down the front of the page. They didn't really pay attention to whether or not there was texture paste or a, a, a pre-planned place for it to go. I kind of assumed that the water would make it run down between the texture paste, kind of like little creeks. Um, because, you know, water goes the easiest, easiest place to travel. I don't know. Um, I did have to do a little bit of moving and shaking, and I added quite a bit of water, which meant my texture paste was also a little bit damp. Okay, it was sopping wet. I did need to put this aside and let it dry for a good hot minute. I went and fed my kids dinner and fussed at them to clean up and get ready for school and all that good stuff. Um, I am going to, now that it is dry, and break up the background and add some interest with this Tim Holtz and it says Stampers Anonymous collection. I will be using a number of the different script stamps in the stamp set as well as the postal cancellation stamp. And I am stamping them with that um, watering can archival ink, that gray ink. And I'm not focusing or worried too much about getting some script down in that bottom right hand corner where my elephant is going to go. I do want to make sure that there's some script that pops out from behind the elephant, but basically I'm kind of ignoring it. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little off screen there. You can't really see the bottom of that page. I also feel like I'm talking really fast today. <laughs> Maybe it's the extra allergy pills. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Now that that part is done, I want to go ahead and adhere my elephant. Um, so the elephant that I purchased came in this shape. I didn't have to crop it down or anything. It is, it is meant to be this, you know, half, most of his head and, and, and part of his body, just his front legs. That is the image that I purchased. And I am going to adhere him it with gel medium. Um, I don't want to put my paint, my, my brush used your words, Jenny down on the page because that watercolor is reactive and I don't want to get green watercolor into my jar of gel medium. So I'm being very careful to kind of avoid that as much as possible. I did forget to leave the trunk and the tusk um, not stuck down to my page. When I realized that I was, um, I did have to go back and kind of gently pull that up. I did that off camera. I do not make you watch me fix that because I was afraid that if it ripped, I was going to have to start over. And I didn't want to, didn't want you to see me crying tears all over my elephant page. I am being very careful to check my brush every time I pick it up to get more gel medium to make sure that it does not have green paint on it before I go back into that jar. Okay. Now that we have the elephant on the page, I am going to add a title. And really funny in my Microsoft Word, word processing, like was it Microsoft Word? That's the name of it, right? There's a font called Elephant. 
it's like meant to be, right? I typed the word elephant in the font elephant. I will adhere this to my page with my gel medium and that chip brush. I must have stuck the other brush in a cup of water already. And at first I had it all the way to the left and then I went, oh yeah, holes, gotta leave room for the holes. Oh, I'm a little panicked about those holes leaving, you know, not being covered up now that I jacked up a couple pages by not punching them in the right place. I will go ahead and add a layer of gel medium over the top of that so I can add some shadowing to it later. And now that chip brush has touched all of the things, I will not put it back in my jar of gel medium. Okay, so here is when I went back down my list and realized, oh, the tusks, I forgot about that. So I have my E, I have my emerald, I have my Eastern, or at least a nod to the Eastern with that um, quatrefoil, and I'm going to add an eraser. I thought that was clever. I thought it was funny. I, when I saw this elephant, I thought it would be perfect if I could wedge an image of a pink eraser underneath his tusk and in his trunk, and it would be kind of perfect. Yeah, I think it's clever. I find myself humorous very often too, and the rest of my family is rolling their eyes at me going, dude, mom, stop. So whatever. <laughs> I found it to be quite clever. Now that I'm looking at the page, it would have been even funnier or more clever if there was no green paint around the eraser. That would have been even funnier. But, you know, hindsight in 2020 and all that. <laughs> At least I got the eraser on, right? The tusks came up, the trunk came up. It didn't tear anything, gratefully, which I was really worried about because I had heat set that gel medium with my heat tool. So I was a little bit nervous that because of the texture of the background, I was able to stick my little pokey tool in one of those little in-between spaces of the gel medium or the texture paste, rather and kind of lift it up without tearing anything. Okay, so now that I have my E and my elephant and my emerald and my Eastern and my erase, I do want to add a little bit of shadowing. So I am going to pick up my heat tool and make sure that that gel medium around the eraser is nice and dry. And I have a mostly dry baby wipe and a gray pit pen. In case you haven't heard me say this 25,000 times, Pit pens are India ink and therefore they are permanent. However, on a non-porous surface for a few seconds, they are smudgeable. This gray is super light. I didn't want to pull the black out. I was afraid it would be just too much. So I was able to add a couple of layers of this light gray and it was way easier to work with than trying to use a tiny bit of the black. So perfect. I am going to go around the elephant and the eraser and add some shadowing and shading around that or it. Um, it's kind of funny how adding the shadowing and shading both pulls him up off the fit page, but also makes the, the elephant a part of the page. So here is my E page. All that I have left to do is adhere the pattern paper to the back. I'm using the other half of that 12 by 12 sheet of ledger paper. Um, I will be sticking that down with my ATG gun just because it's easy and that's what I have right there on my desk. It's always on my desk because it's huge and it doesn't fit anywhere else. <laughs> but also I use it all the time. So here is my pattern paper. I'm going to go ahead and um, kind of square that up down that bottom left hand corner and up the left hand side so that I can trim it nicely with my Tim Holtz scissors that are awesome. The more I use them, the more I love them. And I wonder why I didn't have them all my life, but I did have to be convinced to purchase them by seeing them on sale. That's just how my brain is, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and trim that down. I am trying to be careful not to cut into the front of my page. Um, and I'm tipping my scissor blade back just a little bit so that it's slightly beveled toward the back, if that makes any sense at all. And then I will pick up my ink blending sponge brush thingy and just go around the back edges of that page to make sure that you cannot see the white core of the pattern paper from the front. It's all about making the front look pretty. And then I'm going to adhere my prompt card to the back of my page and I will be all finished for this month. Now these mini missions are super fun. I find them a little bit less stressful than trying to create a whole page. I don't know why that is. In my brain, it is less stressful. <laughs> Maybe because I'm not trying to 
to work on a whole theme. I'm just working on a letter and a couple of words. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I am going to go ahead and sign and date my page over here in the corner, probably right where I punched the hole. So I will have to sign and date it somewhere else. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble about elephants and emeralds and erasers. Thank you so much for stopping by. Here are a couple of close-up pictures so that you can see the texture and the stamping and how awesome that turned out. Have a great day. And if you have not done so already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. See ya. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and watching my video. I have linked a couple other videos here for you to watch, as well as a subscribe button. If you have not done so already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. And if you know somebody who would like it, please feel free to share. Have a great day.